It's been over eight years since I left my home country and my previous life to move to an intentional community. It's fascinating how time moves so fast. It feels like yesterday when I left with a sense of confusion, excitement, nervousness and determination all at the same time. Yet I also have the sensation of having been here and lived lifetimes. It's funny how the mechanism of change and transformation works. It allows us to live years in only a month, and at the same time we so easily step into the new reality that we forget who we were before the change had happened. I try to remind myself in order to feel gratitude for the steps I've made and for the life I'm living, for who I am embodying. Gratefulness not only for the past that has brought me into this presence, but also for the future that is unfolding, for who I perceive that I am becoming. I have been here now for more than eight years, and still I have the feeling of being in vacation. I left only at the age of 21 years old, but I still had had the experience of a normal life, of studying, of working, of looking forward to the weekend to relax, to go out with friends, and dreading the Monday morning when I had to go back to work. Not because I didn't like what I did, but because I felt trapped in a system, and only the thought of that being my life up until old age gave me so strong anxiety and desperation that I felt like a life like that wasn't worth living. Still, it's so difficult to find a way out of this system. The human need for security and safety often leads to stagnation, and the other, an equally important need for human evolution that is excitement, the new and the unknown, is often suppressed. There is a quote from the founder of my community that says, We are crazy wanderers, that much is certain. We're leaving behind the security of the nothing we used to own in exchange of the uncertainty of the infinite. This really speaks to my heart and to the fact that the security that we are seeking in society is often a false reassurance that doesn't promise joy, awakening and fulfillment. I realized in me that being safe and feeling safe was two very different things and that for me I was actually feeling the safest when I felt that I had the capacity in me to step out into the unknown, to take risks and to follow my heart. A strange paradox, perhaps. Hello everyone. It is August right now, the beginning of August, and I have just come home from Sweden where I go every year, going up to the north to visit my grandmother and to be with uh, with my family up there and it's always strange I feel to come back in August because even though it's still warm outside it's like almost 30 degrees Celsius but there's something special in the air it's as if there's this energy the wind it sounds differently it's really like autumn it's on its way as it's knocking on the door and it's a very special feeling because I have this every year since I'm here. And it's yeah, it's quite particular to feel that the summer is ending, even though it's still like full blown summer. But I really felt like I wanted to sit down by this beautiful tree uh, up on this beautiful place here next to my village to speak about what I mean when I say that I have been in vacation for eight years, actually more than eight years. I really have this feeling that since I arrived here to this community and since I left my home in Sweden that it's been like a vacation and it's never stopped. I actually thought when I came here that okay I came here for a program, something that I was so interested in was community life, intentional communities, and especially spiritual communities, since I had a very powerful spiritual awakening a couple of years before I arrived here. And so I was really searching for contexts where I could be with people and share life with people who had the, a similar view of life as I had. And I, I have promised so many times I will do a specific video where I really speak about my 
spiritual awakening. And upcoming now is that I have started, I'm about to launch my new podcast, Reborn to Live podcast. And the first episode of that podcast will actually be with me going through some very important moments in my life and touching on things that I think can be very helpful for many people who are experiencing similar things or who have experienced similar things but now feel stuck and don't know how to move from that. But for now, pondering on the fact of that feeling of being in vacation for over eight years, it's very funny because when I came to Damanhur, to the community where I live, the word, I realized very quickly that the word vacation was actually a word that was a bit banned. Uh, it's looked upon in a way that is not very positive and people don't say that they go for a vacation but say that if they go away they may, they go for regeneration and the reason for why the word vacation is looked upon in a negative light in this community is the same reason to why I've decided to name this video I've been in vacation for eight years because I think that you can see this matter from two different points and the point from which we see it in my community is that vacation is something negative because it is caught up in a system where we actually live the main amount of time in our lives in something that we are not satisfied with so that we need a vacation to rest from that. The idea that we go about life and that we spend the most of our time in something that is not meaningful for us and that doesn't allow us to feel meaning in our lives and so that we need to take a break every now and then to go for vacation and actually do what is meaningful for us and do the things that brings us joy and that brings us rest is a very um, limited concept of life and so vacation in that system is something that is looked upon very negatively because you shouldn't live a life that you need vacation from. So this is why in Damanhur the word vacation is not very popular because we think that we should really live a life where we are doing something every day that fills us so much with meaning that vacation becomes a concept that is not really needed anymore. And at the same time, you can also look at it from the other way around, where you feel that you create a life where you're in vacation all the time, which is why I named this video in this way, because this is really how I feel. Since I left my home country and came here, to do something, I came here to do something that was really meaningful for me. I wanted to come into a context where I felt that everything that I was doing was giving meaning not only for me, but to society in a broader context, but also in my everyday interactions, in creating something where I felt that I was actually living and experiencing what I thought that life would be, that I was living something that was full of meaning. And as I came here, of course, I did a program like a tourist, like a program that anyone can do to just experience what life is. But And many things that I experienced in that program was really from the point of view of actually being in vacation, being, in, being here as a tourist and deciding to do something, even if that was work, for example, working in the gardens or working with helping to improve something in the community, I felt that it was so meaningful for me and I paid as a tourist to do those things. As when I was 18 years old, I actually paid to go and do volunteer work in Costa Rica in the jungle. And I think that is so funny because in our society, especially now, there's this big movement of volunteer work where people actually go to pay to do something that feels meaningful for them. And that's a concept that is so on the opposite spectrum from what we do in our everyday life. We get paid for something that we don't feel is meaningful for us. And then on our vacation, we go to pay to do something that is also work, but that feels meaningful for us. So for me, it was all about, okay, but how can I live a life where I do every day those things that are meaningful for me? And that, in that sense, living as I'm in vacation all of the time, even though... I am doing things in which I earn money and I will also do a video about how to earn money within an eco-village and intentional community because I know that this is one of the crucial things to why people hesitate in moving into intentional communities or eco-villages because of the confusion around how to actually make money or if you even need to make money when you live in an intentional community. So I will make a video especially about that. But even in the things that I have done where I have been making money, I realized that 
outside of those things within my community, we have so much things that are work in which I don't make money, which is a kind of volunteer or devotional work that I feel is equally important. And so I think this concept of creating a life in which everything you do is so meaningful that you feel like you're in a vacation when you're working, that's really a key to happiness. And I think that's also really a key to do something well. I don't think that doing something that we are not passionate about brings any fortune for yourself, but not even for the people that you work for. And so I really think that we should reevaluate the way that we look at the system also in a sense of looking at the talents of people. And as I've mentioned in some other videos, I think that each human being has a kind of genius, has a kind of set of talents that should be explored. And often it's connected to what we really love to do. And sadly, what we do in our you know, hobby time or what we do when we are not working, that is what we should really do most of our time because also that's the key to what we can contribute to in this society. I think that when people have really tapped into what they're really skilled at, which is connected to their talents, which is connected to what they love to do, they feel satisfied and they are giving something that is satisfying to the rest of society. Now, I think that there is two main difficulties for people to arrive to a point where they feel like their life is like a continuous vacation, where they feel like that they're not stuck in their life. There's no day, and this is what I feel, there's not been one day since I moved to this community, so for eight years that I have felt bored, that I have felt that my life was meaningless, that I felt that I've asked myself, what am I doing? Like, I should do something else with my life. I've not felt like that since I arrived here. And that does not mean that I haven't felt challenged, that I haven't felt like there's been moments in which I've been sad or which where I've been angry or where I've felt frustrated. Because I think that those emotions are normal and they are the ups and downs of life in general. And I think it's very healthy to feel those emotions. It's just like the wave of life which we are surfing on. But that is very different from the emotions of feeling dull, of feeling grey, of feeling static, of feeling unempowered, of feeling like a lack of motivation for life. And that is something that I have never felt. I've always, since I arrived here, felt embraced and grateful for the choices that I've made, for the community that I have around me and for all the endless opportunities of life that that even brings. And of course, this is the right context for me. I've really found my soul tribe and my environment in which I feel that I also individually can contribute and can bloom as, as a person, can, can grow as a person. And I think that is, of course, different for everyone. You need to find yours. But I think that the difficult thing for people is not really the fact that they don't want to do a shift like that but I think that it's really about the fact that we haven't been educated in our society to really look upon our talents and to really seek what really creates satisfaction for ourselves in our life. We are grown into a society where we have an educational system where we need to do specific things regardless of what we like and not and where we need to dedicate a, such a huge amount of our time to things that honestly is very pointless for many people and so we are trained for years and years and years and in those years in which we have the most power to actually experience and explore what and who we are we are shut into a system where we're told what to do and where we need to focus on things that we are not passionate about. And so we're already indoctrinated, if you say that, to thinking that life is about doing things that you don't want to do and that the things that you like to do, you do in your weekends or you do in your spare time. And I think that that is a part of the movement of personal development, of also spiritual development and spiritual evolution that we are going through as a humanity, where people really wake up to the fact of saying, okay, who am I? What do I love to do? What can I contribute with? What is my place on this planet? And when you start asking those questions, when you start doing actually work with that and start to understand, but I always loved doing this. I was great at this. This is the thing that when I do this, time does not exist because I enter so much into the present moment that time does not exist anymore. 
and this is what really fulfills me. So when you find that, and it requires work because oftentimes we have been so conditioned that we don't know what we want anymore. We don't know what we're good at. We don't know what would give us passion. So it it requires some unlearning to do and some soul digging, I think I would call it. But when you do find that, the second thing that hinders people from actually doing that is courage. And it is always the kind of sense of like, oh, I'm, no, I'm not good enough. And what if I start doing that? How can I even turn this into something that I can earn money with? Because that is oftentimes the problem. We, we need to realize that we live in a society where we need to make money to be able to live. This is our way of exchange in this moment of time. So we cannot live without it. If not in very extreme situations, of course, perhaps your passion has always been to become a monk and oftentimes monks don't earn any money. But if your passion is something else and you attempt to live in the society in which you need money to live, you need to be able to transform that talent into something that you can earn something from. But this is also a process. The problem is that when you find that thing that is your thing, don't shy away from that. Don't uh, tell yourself that you are not good enough, that it's not worth it, that you will never be able to do that. Of course, you might even have a period in which you need to work with something that you don't like to arrive to where you need to go. But if you continue with consistency and with the sense that you will make it, you will. You know, the only reason to why people fail is it that they stop at the first obstacle and they feel, oh, this was not for me or this is too difficult. Or if you continue and continue and you see your goal with determination, you will not fail. This is what every person who has been successful in anything has said. Success lies in consistency and determination. And I think that there is nothing more important than to be determined to live at your fullest. We have this one life to experience life and the beauty of life and to experience who we are through the mirroring of life around us. So why would we spend the most of our time in our life in doing something that does not do that, that doesn't fulfill us? For me, it's, it's crazy to even think that we have a society that gets us in that direction. And when you look at old people and what they're saying that their most regrets are, are that they never fully did what they really loved or they didn't spend as much time with the people that they loved, that they were so caught up in things that was actually not of importance. So instead of arriving to old age and feeling regret about something, let's just try and make it into our main goal of life to really create a life that we are happy with so that we, when we become old, when we lie on our deathbed, we can die with peace, that we did everything, not only for ourselves, but for the society around us, for the people that we love. And I think also one thing, one, one thing that we do when we really pursue what makes us happy is that we are doing a lot for the people around us that we love because we show people that it's okay we show people around us that it's healthy, it's okay to do what we love. Because only when we are satisfied with ourselves, when we are calm with ourselves, when we do something that we love, we can share that love with others. Otherwise, we will only just mirror the hole that we have inside us, which create conflicts. These are things that we see a lot when living in a community. People who are not satisfied with who they are, with what they do, they tend to project that onto others and to radiate out that kind of grief that can present itself in, as anger, as blame, as victimhood, and so on. <laughs>